our own perception is weakness yes yeah but the reality is we've acknowledged it and we can do something about it if you don't do something about it what's that going to have what mm. impacts that going to have somewhere further down the line my view of the world then was am i going to live or die because i had that choice obviously i decided that i was going to live Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Unlocked, the Ricky Lock podcast with me, Ricky Lock. Thank you so much to everybody that has been following along for the last five weeks and leaving all of your lovely reviews and kind messages. I truly appreciate every single one of them. If you haven't left a review yet, please head over to the Apple podcast, hit that star button and leave a review as well to let me know what you think of the show. It really does help out. In this week's episode, I talk to the amazing Jules Turner about burnout. Burnout is a very serious conversation for any business owner, and it's about a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion. For many people right now, you're probably working from home, and you may experience this in the coming months. And this is a really important conversation that I don't want you to miss. Don't forget, as always, check out the show notes at the end of this episode, where you'll be able to download Jules' free pamphlet to recognize the signs of burnout. As always, I'm also giving away my free resources, which is how to create an amazing videos with a smartphone. And that is free for all of the listeners. And lastly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you know when every single episode is out. Without further ado, enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocked, the Ricky Lock podcast with me, Ricky Lock. And today we have a wonderful guest. We have the amazing Jules Turner. Hello, Jules. How are you? Hi, Ricky. I'm really, really well. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for inviting me on to, um, to talk to you today. It's really a great honour for me. Oh, thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. We've only recently met within the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And I was so blown away by your story that I think that your story is going to add a lot of value to people who listen to this podcast. And I think it'd just be great to share to you know a wider audience about the things that you have done to cope through that. So for those that are listening, me and Jules met at a course called Expert Speaker Revolution, uh, literally about a week ago. And it was an amazing five days, wasn't it? Five days of real training course in a real building, not virtually. It was a huge amount of energy, wasn't there? It was amazing. It was yeah. absolutely, I, I'm, it's, a, it's, a, it's a week ago today that we did our 29 minutes, you know. <laughs> yeah, 29 minute talk. Yeah. And yeah. There was uh, 13 of us, wasn't there? And every day we were absolutely shattered because it was just it was just a, an amazing experience, wasn't it? And well, well, um, yeah. met some lovely people as well. So if you it are listening to this... With others as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, if, if anybody from ESR is listening to this, hello. Um, I think you all know that you all hold a very special part in our hearts. So lovely to see you there a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, Jules, can't wait for this. Tell us who you are and what do you do? So, yeah, so I'm... Uh... My name is Jules Turner, and I I help senior professionals who are heading towards um, what is commonly known as burnout, and I help them to reinvent their lives. Now, why I do this is because I went through an incredibly difficult time back in 2014, and where I was heading towards burn, burnout, I didn't recognise it. And I ended up in hospital. I was actually, um, you know, it was a five day period where I went from, you know, working in a normal corporate environment, lots of responsibility. And five days later, I was in an intensive care unit on life support. Wow. Uh, nobody knew what was going on. Um, I was completely paralyzed. I was locked in. I could hear and see, but I couldn't talk. I was completely dependent on others. And during that time, you know, I actually nearly lost my life three times through having um, what is known as a respiratory arrest, which is where your, your oxygen levels go critically low um, because you're on the breathing machine and, and of course your, your brain starts to shut down. But we gradually got through that. I had this idea that I wanted to walk out of hospital um, now at the time it was completely, I mean, if you, if you'd have seen me, it was, well, people were thinking, well, it's going to be impossible. 
But mm. I had this notion that it was, you know, anything's possible. I had to do it. And, you know, I, seven months later, after being in intensive care for 80 nights, 80 days and 80 nights and wow. re rehabilitation for the rest of that time. Yeah, in fact, in fact, if I think about it, it's probably around about six years ago this week that I oh, wow. walked over that threshold. Blimey. Wow. It was, it was, you know, it was something that I knew I wanted to do. So I had to do it and I made it happen. And it was yeah. very, very hard work. Yeah, I guess as well for for people listening, because we have a wide range of listeners of uh, different ages and different businesses. What what is burnout? What does it mean? Well, it's it's actually, I guess, really for me, it's where you just get to a point in your life where everything is built up over time. You know, the pressures of work and life, and you know, in, in all sorts of areas. You know, you think about finances and and yeah health and personal relationships and all of those things that kind of come together there's there's pressures in all of those areas that you know compound themselves to a point where you just cannot carry on but you're you feel as though you need to carry on but I mean for me my body said that's it and collapsed you know yeah. completely broke you know shut down if you like um, and of course, it can happen in all sorts of different situations that, and it can it can manifest itself in all sorts of different ways. You know, um, you know, mine was mine was being hospitalized with complete paralysis. You know, in other people, it could be developing, you know, cancer or, you know, yeah. having having some other sort of mental breakdown or something like that. You know, burnout is effectively where something that's outside of you stops you from going any further yeah. really you know and of course it's within your body but it's it's bang wallop you know your your time's up you yeah. know and of course in some instances people die you know yeah. heart attack cardiac arrest you know that those sort of things are are as are as a result of people heading towards burnout yeah and it's because we the, the amount of pressure that was out there on our lives, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's almost like our own pressure as much as anything else. Yeah. We, we can often um, either self-sabotage or even put that pressure on ourselves to, to meet goals and stuff, but nobody else really puts that pressure on us except for ourselves. I think we can sometimes be our own worst enemy. Can't we, when we are wanting to achieve stuff, where does that pressure come from? Where is it built up from? How does it get to a point or, or why does it get to a point that, Nobody starts to recognize it until, like you said, unfortunately, you've gone hospitalized. You know, why do we only recognize it then and not earlier on? Well, I think I think part of it's because we don't we don't want to recognize it. I mean, the signs are there. There's 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 clear signs. And, you know, the the the, the interesting thing about what I do now is that I actually reflected back on my own my own situation. Yeah. And all the signs were there. And there was there was there was lots of signs. Now, I've recently written this small pamphlet, which you know I've, I'm, I've, is out there at the moment, which just reflects on just seven of those signs. Yeah. And you know things like simple things like being distracted, for example, is a sign yeah. that you're 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 um, you're starting to burn out because you can pick up the phone, you know, and look at somebody else, you know, go onto Facebook or LinkedIn and think. Well, why are not doing that? You know, we, we, we all yeah. compare ourselves to other people. Yeah. You know, and then that's that. And then an, another sign that I've written about is is doubting your own ability, because yeah. what tends to happen is, especially in a, in, a, in a very competitive corporate environment, from where I came from, it's very very highly competitive. Yeah. And I think that's possibly as much the competition that we put on ourselves as anything else. And that what does happen in some cases is, although we have this outward persona that we're really confident, yeah. inside we're really not, we, mm. we, we doubt every move that we make because yeah. we're not sure how, what's, what the outcome of that is. You know? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'll give you an example. Recently, I was, I was I, in fact, I wrote something about on LinkedIn about 
senior managers being put under pressure in in especially in this environment of covid where they have to and this is business owners as much as anything where they have to make really really difficult decisions about their staff yeah now outside you have to make these big decisions and and go ahead with them mm-hmm. whereas on the inside there's going to be an element of doubt as to how that how you're going to do that and the, the, your vulnerability yeah. comes into play as well and care and that sort of thing so you know there's there's, there's these little signs that that are there yeah yeah we don't necessarily do anything about we brush under the carpet and that's what i did when yeah. i was it, Ill, it, right? it makes me think of darren hardy who talks about the compound effect in his book which is a great book for everyone to read but he always asks this question have you ever been bitten by an elephant and everybody goes no of course not but then he says well have you ever been bitten by a mosquito and they go yeah of course you can and he says so it's the small things in life that makes a huge difference exactly. and like that thing it's that small little signs that you need to pay attention to because it will hurt yeah. you in the long run. Yeah. I think it's really important what you were saying there as well about social media. I've definitely felt that. And I know there's probably a lot of people uh, in businesses that you have that, um, you know, uh, that comparisonitis, that kind of thing, you know, you're comparing yourself all the time and there's a bit of a uh, imposter syndrome as well. You know, you're doubting your yeah. ability. You're yeah. looking at people going, Oh my God, that person's successful. They're doing that. They're doing that. Oh my God, why aren't I doing that? And I, I have to say, I've been at that point where you're looking, you're scrolling through the feed, you're going, oh, that's brilliant, well done. But in your head, you're thinking, oh my God, that's not fair, why, you know, why? And I mentioned this in my earlier episodes about how I felt very angry and bitter. Mm. I've now adapted to that point where I'm generally giving kindness to people. And I, I mean it, if I see someone being successful, I'm literally just going, well done to you, that's fantastic. You know, I really mean that. And then move on and try not to get hung up on that. But one of the things about that perception is that you are... The, the life is uh, the life uh, is portrayed on social media as this wonderful life. You know, everybody wants that perfect, you know, rose tinted glasses kind of life, you know. And I have to say that back in May, some people who listen to this will know this, but I had kind of like a mini, mini breakdown where I kind of burnt out. And obviously lots of different circumstances will happen. But as a person for myself who constantly is putting stuff like yourself out on LinkedIn and social media, I was portraying this life of, oh, Ricky's this great guy. He's, he's always smiling. He's always happy. He's always having this wonderful time performing magic. But inside, during that time in May, I was, I was really burning out because everybody just uh, assumed that I was okay. But actually, I was really, you know, breaking down inside and burning out because I just couldn't, couldn't handle, you know, there was no success anymore. There was no business coming in. And like you were just saying there, it was only when I put a blog out to say, look, it's okay to not feel okay. Um, I'm going to expose my insecurities and say, look, do you know what? I'm finding this quite difficult as well. And that vulnerability really then connected to people and say, Ricky, I'm so glad that you said this. I feel exactly the same. Yeah. And going back to what I was saying, that perception, totally, totally agree with you there. I think that in life, we, we're we taught to have that perception. Aren't I mean, like, not to kind of um, do stereotypes or anything like that, but as men, you're always told to man up, come on, Ricky, man up. But actually, no, I feel shit. I feel crap. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I need to do all that. So I need to stop. Or otherwise, I'm going to get myself ill. But yeah, what, what a way that the world is led with perception. I know. And I, I've got a question for you there, Ricky. You know, you talked mm-hmm. about your, your sort of um, heading toward breakdown. I guess really my question to you is what signs did you see before that was happening? Yeah, so I guess there was a lot of um, the signs that you've mentioned in the uh, in your pamphlet, um, which we'll, we'll share, by the way, everyone listening, there'll be a link inside the show notes for this. There was a lot of blame. You know, I was blaming the, yep. oh, the, yes. the government. I was blaming yep. other yep. people. You know, why am I getting this success? It's their fault. And I wasn't taking yep. that accountability for myself. Distraction is massive for me. I'm a very, uh, I'm an extroverted person. I'm always doing stuff all the time. But phones and stuff for that can be very distracting that made that really difficult and I think as well I was just um doing that kind of imposter syndrome probably doubting my ability you know Mm -hmm. thinking you know and I needed those people to actually say to me Ricky look don't worry that you know you're okay that this is what you are good at think about this and that you are adding value to people but but I think because of that time where people weren't people were just kind of looking after themselves weren't they because everyone was worried yeah but yeah I just needed to connect to those people to tell me look, Ricky, this is the value that you're adding. You are, you're a wonderful guy. You're doing a great job. 
and you just need that little pick me up and say, look, this is how I feel. Uh, but yeah, definitely those signs, doubting my ability, blaming and uh, distraction was the three key signs for me. Absolutely. And they're, and they're, and they're the three key signs in my, you know, they're three of the signs in, in my booklet. You know, the blaming others is a, is, is a, a great one, you know, yeah. you do what you do. Um, but it was, it's also interesting how, you know, when you have other people support, yeah how you can change your perception and you you, you need you know it's those those little things that help to start to move things forward yeah and going back to my story you know uh, if you consider well I was in March 2014 because that's when it all kicked off you know and my view of the world then was am I going to live or die because I had that choice so you know obviously I decided that I was going to live and mm. and I think that one of the things that struck me was that anything is possible right and that's one of the key things that I one of my messages that you know anything is possible and I've developed this system called the four dimensions of possibility which runs through the whole of what I do really you know yeah. because I'm a strong believer and I, I'm an advocate and living proof that yeah. anything is possible you know yeah absolutely so i have to live by that example and even in this situation where and and it's you know in in the covid era which i've called it <laughs> yeah there's a lot of people out there that are under a hell of a lot of pressure yeah but the reality is if we take that step back and start thinking about something differently there is always a possibility that yeah things are going to be better yeah i i resonate with that quite recently as well there's something uh, that we've shared before this about hustle 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 you know there's many messages out there from people about that and that's great if people want to do that uh it might not work for everybody but that message is not great you know i've had it recently where i was thinking yeah i'm just going to hustle 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 today i'm going to work really really hard yeah. and then i'd get like an email say nine o'clock at night for an inquiry and then business hat comes on right got to respond to this got to get into character mode got to get into magician mode right let's respond let's do this it's business time and that could go on till like 10 11 o'clock at night and then my partner's sitting there thinking ricky I, I've, I've been to work today um you've been yeah. working today this is our time you know mm. you know we should be spending the time together mm. and mm. that you know that it could be that message yeah it's okay don't worry i'm not gonna be long and then long turns into hours and hours and hours but the longer effect of that what will happen the next day is I'll probably wake up with a migraine. Um, something that a lot of probably listeners don't re know or uh, realize about me is I actually have high blood pressure. It's hereditary, yeah. uh, unfortunately, from uh, from my family. And that means that diet is really important to me as well. So if I have those hustle days and put that pressure on myself and thinking, do you know what, I'm going to work really, really hard. I know what happens. I miss my lunch. You know, I don't eat uh, my lunch till three o'clock and then that just yeah. wears my body down. I then might go on to like energy drinks, which is the worst possible thing. And that blood pressure is terrible because the next day I then feel groggy. I feel awful. It affects my relationships. It affects my body. Yeah. And yeah. because it's a silent killer anyway, yeah. if I don't start taking that pressure off myself and taking that time away, I might not make it to the next that's, milestone of my life. You know, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's that, these are all the hidden things that we don't really, you know, yeah. Uh, I think we understand, but we kind of again, it's like pushing pushing those to the back. Yeah. In 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 response to trying to hustle now. Yeah. You know, if if I think about the idea of hustling, and there's a number of sort of different strands we could talk about here. You know, for example, um, the the idea of um, working from home, for example, in the in the yeah. COVID era how we can kind of get sucked into this notion or habit of working longer now i've 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 known i know a number of people a number of examples where although people are working from home they won't take breaks and they'll work longer hours and yes. in, in some examples they'll be working to you know starting work at nine o'clock in the morning yeah they might be walking from their their bedroom to their office yeah right sitting in their office you know their makeshift office mm. not really having much much of a break yeah 
because there's no social interaction with other people in the office. Yeah. Right. Physical social interaction. They'll get on and do stuff. And before they know it, it's 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. They go to bed back yeah. across the landing to their bed. Yeah. And then the same thing happens next day. So yeah, there's, yeah. you know, there's, there's, the, and that can have a devastating effect. And you know, yeah. that, that is just something that really needs to, you know, people, people need to think about that as to yeah. what is really happening with their lives. Well, you said at the start, it's that compound effect, isn't it? It's compounded, you know, little by little, it'll add up to a lot. You know, if you put a penny out every single day yeah. over a year, that's 365 pennies. But yeah, at exactly. the time, one piece seems like nothing. But yeah. that could yeah. be that extra hour that you stop working and you go for a walk and get some fresh air. By adding yeah. that in, you're going to prolong your life. You're going to feel yeah. better. It will make yeah. your relationships better. I know that I had to go for a walk and just stop because I was realizing that. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll quote the phrase by Jim Rohn that we shared before, uh, earlier on before this, which was beware of what you become in pursuit of what you want. Yeah. And I wanted that lifestyle of being this magician, but actually what was it doing? Well, I wasn't really having great relationships at home. You know, I was being narky because I was like, I need to do my emails. I ain't got time. No, I, I'll cook dinner yeah. in, an, in, in a minute. Yeah. And then a minute would yeah. turn into an hour. Yeah. And then you'd look at the clock and it'd be like, oh my God, it's 10 o'clock at the night. And I've not even gave any attention to my partner or even to the people that I care about. And you think, I don't want to be that person. I shouldn't yeah. be getting to that point because that's what people will remember. And the reality is it can, it, we can fall into that habit. We can fall into that situation yeah. without even realizing. So we have to really be conscious of that. We have to really be conscious of that and make an effort. Now, for me, for example, I live on the South coast in a beautiful um, little village called Emsworth, which is between um, it's between Chichester and Portsmouth. And we, we, we sit at the, right at the top of the, Chichester Harbour is a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, I moved here in 2018 as part of my moving away from London and making a fantastic life for myself, you see. Yeah. You know, post 2014. But what I what I do, I'm make sure that I'll go out every day and walk along the foreshore. Because there's something new every day. I mean, if people follow me on LinkedIn, they'll see a couple, you know, every now and again I'll take a picture of yeah. the walk um but you know every day I'll, I'll go out with my wife and my dog and we'll just have a chin wag and have a chat and <laughs> just chill and i don't feel guilty about the fact that i spent two hours going for a walk Absolutely, or doing something yeah. completely different during the day because yeah. it re-energizes me i have a a choice as to whether i can work into the evening or not yeah my wife understands that Sometimes I will, and sometimes I'm more creative in the evening. Yeah, I yeah. Think, you know, so it's using those times of the day that best suit you in yeah. order to make your life the best it can be, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. I share this with an upcoming episode with uh, two lovely ladies, Roxy and Katie, who work in the wedding industry. And we talked about this idea of power hours. You know, if, for yeah. example, my ideal client is not online or not, uh, inquiring until eight o'clock at nine o'clock at night. Why am I working extremely hard at eight o'clock in the morning? Mm. I should be doing it in the time that, like you said, where I'm most productive. Yeah. If at seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, I'm not really at my best, then why am I hustling? Because it's just yeah. going to, you know, I'll be hustling all the way till six o'clock and then think, six oh my God, yeah, my client's going to be online in a minute. I'm going to have to carry on. And that's a whole day gone. Yeah. And I think also what tends to happen is that, um, especially with, entrepreneurs who have come out of corporate they think they have to do the nine to five and yes yeah and and when I left corporate at the beginning of this year one of the things that I felt really and, and I described this to to a number of people I felt really liberated yeah because my time was my own and I could take responsibility for all of that time and do whatever I liked you know of course yeah. my business is my passion and helping people is my passion but at the same time i have in order f in order for me to help other people i have to help help myself yeah, it's like the right. mask scenario you know put the yeah, yeah. mask on yourself before you 
put the oxygen mask on. Yes. Yeah. I love that phrase. We used to use that a lot in training. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> for anybody listening, this is the idea that if you are uh, flying on a plane, when they come around, they say to you, put the oxygen mask on yourself. They don't say put it on the person next to you. And the idea is that if you can't look after yourself, you can't look after other people. And you are so right on that, Jules. And I think that a lot of people don't do that. I've certainly been a, a victim of that, not self-care uh, and taking some time. And I think even after I record this episode, I'm going to stop, go outside and just get some fresh air for five minutes yep. just to kind of recharge those batteries. But I think it's interesting, isn't it? That the idea of vulnerability, Gary Vee talks about it a lot, which is, you know, vulnerability is a strength. A lot of people see it as a weakness. But I think if you expose your insecurities and that vulnerability is exposed, you can become stronger. When I had that mini meltdown back in May, the amount of attention that people just reached out and said, Ricky, I'm so glad you've said this. I feel the same. And I hope you are. I hope you're OK. And it just made me actually be stronger. But I was so worried thinking if I stop right now and I tell people that I'm not, I'm not doing very well, what they're going to think of me, will they just think less of me? But again, like I've shared with Sarah Rudder a couple of episodes ago, that label that I'm putting on myself as a, a failure, if I, if I show how weak I am and how vulnerable I am, nobody was putting that label on except for me. Yeah. So actually, people just said, do you know what, Ricky? I'm so glad you said this. I feel the same and I resonate yeah. with you. Yeah, because we, we can all relate to each other on that sort of situation. Yeah. And I think with, with, with the vulnerability side, I think what tends to happen and again, especially in sort of and in a competitive environment, yeah. um, is that and as you say, we if we show vulnerability, it's 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 our own perception of a sign of weakness. Now, yeah. when we were children, we were vulnerable, and our parents, yeah. in, in many cases, and in not all, not all cases, but in many cases, would protect us from being vulnerable. Yeah. So there's that kind of almost like that shield, and then over time, when we're growing up. We yeah. protect ourselves from that vulnerability, you know, through the teenage years and, and yeah. early adolescence and that sort of thing. You know, there's kids, kids can be very, very horrible to each other, you know. Yeah. And so we build up that sort of, um, I guess, really, I'd describe it as a bit of a brick wall. We start to create our own barriers to our own vulnerabilities, keeping it down, yeah. keeping it down. And then we, it's habitually kept down. And of course, Every now and again, it sort of starts to bubble up like a, you know, champagne bottle. Yeah. And then we just want to keep it down. We just want to keep it down. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, at the point that there's a pressure point, it's, it's got to go somewhere. So it's just right. boom. Right. And I think that when we get to that point, we then start to acknowledge the fact that we feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think that in most cases, especially in the, in the competitive corporate environment, if we do that, as you say, we're, we're, our own perception is weakness. Yes. Yeah. But the reality is we've acknowledged it and we can do something about it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's the key, actually. And, and again, the, the vulnerability, although it's not necessarily in my booklet, is one of the signs of if you don't do something about it, what's that going to have? What impacts mm. that going to have somewhere further down the line? Wow, uh, I love that. R what a great conversation, Jules. So I guess that the, something you've talked about, obviously, is the four dimensions of possibility. And you've got this, this new system and you've got, obviously, the, uh, the pamphlet that's out. Obviously, we'll include this for everybody in the show notes. But just as a little summary, what does the, um, the pamphlet actually help people do? So really, the pamphlet itself, I've called Are You Burning Out? What Are The Signs? And I go through just really cause and effect of seven of the signs and three, three of them that we've actually described already in this conversation, actually. So we talked about, I think we talked about blaming others. Mm -hmm. We talked about doubting your own ability and also distraction. So they're three of the, the seven that are in there. But what the, 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 um, the pamphlet does, it, it gives a brief description, but at the end of each description, it will give you three or four questions as to, opening up your own awarenesses and what potential sign and helps you to take one step further forward in going round that or doing something about it. Because as we mentioned earlier, if we don't do anything about it, it will start to manifest itself in different ways and yeah. end up 
burning out. So it gives you, and this is based on my own experience, gives the reader the ability and the chance to take action on that particular situation that they're in. Yeah. Definitely. So it goes through each of these signs and just asks those. So it's just a bit of a workbook, bit of a reflection and a thought awareness process, really. Great. Love that. Thank you so much for um, for offering that to the listeners. I really appreciate that. And if people want to find out more about what you do, the, obviously the, uh, the crazy videos and the, the fantastic videos that you do, not crazy, on LinkedIn, uh, for people to come check you out to find out what you do and, and more about what you offer, how can they find you? So, yeah, come to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I do have a website which is under well, it's under construction at the moment, up being updated. Um, that's uh, www.julesturner.co.uk. If people, obviously, if people want to connect, connect via LinkedIn. Um, and also, I'm I'm actually going to start in the next few weeks as well. I'm going to start a a bit of a newsletter um, type oh, yeah. thing, weekly thing. Um, and if people want to subscribe to that they can you know drop drop me a line on on info at jewelsturner.co.uk and i can add them to to the list of people who receive it i mean it's it's under construction at the moment but that will be out in the next few weeks or so so there's a variety of ways for, for people to get in contact with me brilliant well jules it's been an absolute pleasure i've been really looking forward to this so thank you for taking the time out your day to come onto the show and good luck for everybody listening as well, I uh, hope that this has added some value to you. And if you are currently seeing those signs that Jules has, has mentioned, then obviously there's something that you can do about it. But thank you, Jules. Have a wonderful no, day. And you. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you very much, Ricky. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jules, for coming onto the show. And for everybody listening, I hope this has really added some value to you in your life right now. Burnout is a very serious conversation and I guess for the magical musings of this episode, definitely go check out that pamphlet in the show notes of what Jules has created to recognise those seven signs of burnout. It's really important. I've definitely experienced it this year and for many people working from home, probably over the next coming months, it's really important that you recognise those signs and protect yourselves. We really have to make sure that we are looking after our own selves so that we can look after the others around us. Thank you for listening to the show. And as always, don't forget to leave a little rating and a review. Let me know what you think of the show and hit that subscribe button so you know when the next episode of Unlocked is out. Have a lovely day. Take care. Goodbye.